Welcome everyone, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, I am making a video on a machine that I've never made before because I've never had one before. <laughs> this is in nine years of doing this. This is a rare video because you are looking at, pun intended, a rare machine. Now when I say rare, you know uh, I often mention that most vintage machines that I work on <clears throat> are not rare. They're not museum machines that were made like in the 1850s and uh, at the dawn of uh, early sewing machines. Uh, this machine uh, is something I found and I saw it and I thought I was I was just you know mystified by it. I'd never seen one and I uh, managed to purchase it um, from someone who said that they thought it ran the last time they had it. <laughs> uh, the last time they used it but they didn't mention how long ago that was. Uh, and it is a German sewing machine. It is called the uh, it is the one of the heaviest I've ever picked up. It's the uh, the Anker RZ model. I currently do not have a manual for this. Uh, it came with a table, and I will showcase the table when I when I uh, uh, in a different video. But um, the machine uses uh, the system, the two outlet system that many other machines use. Uh, there's a cord and a plug for the light and one for the motor. And uh, this machine looks to be, I believe, for, for just the cursory glance I've, I've tried to uh, look for information online, I believe this is before the Second World War. I think it's probably somewhere in the 1930s. I just don't know. I'm going to have to get more info. By the way, if any of you have any info on Anker machines, um, let me know. Uh, because there are there are a number of brands of machines that came from Germany. Another one is called Adler, and today that brand name is is often seen as Adler Durkhoff, which is also an industrial sewing machine maker. I don't know if Anker maybe at one point made industrial sewing machines. I wouldn't be surprised, given the <clears throat> just the you know this thing is really built um, really over engineered. Uh, but the reason I was interested in it wasn't just because it was an old sewing machine and not just because I hadn't had an Anker before, but it's a zigzag. It's actually a zigzag sewing machine and would be one of the early zigzag models for domestic sewing machines. Because I've mentioned to you all before that uh, Neki was the first company that really popularized zigzag uh, uh, in terms of really making some hay with that, that design. And uh, anyway, this, this machine has a few things that are curious about it. This, of course, there are settings here, and I can see these are little thumb screws that you would, that you would loosen. Uh, notice that I'm not pushing any of these levers or screws right now because uh, this machine has been sitting many, many years. How many, I don't know, but I can tell, you know, things, first of all, you know, I don't know, for example, do I need to push down? Do I need to turn this before I move? So I need to study that. And I'm trying to follow the advice I give all of you. If you've got a machine and you're not sure how it works, and it's been sitting a while, which many of them have, be gentle and just kind of hold off before you start moving things around. I sometimes see people on YouTube and they're just slapping. They take machines and they're kind of rough with them. And I'm thinking, yeah, they're metal and they're strong, but they've been, they really need to, uh, to be woken up, as I like to say. So Anker, maybe uh, those of you who have helped me uh, realized that my that video I made recently on a Singer treadle, it's not a German machine. Uh, it says Anker, and down here is a little anchor symbol in the plate, this beautiful plate. And I'm just going to take a guess. I wonder if Anker is German for anchor, uh, but I'm not going to say it for sure because, <laughs> as those of you who know, uh, my German is uh, I don't speak the language. So, uh, counting on those of you who who view my channel to help me and help me. Uh, Help me learn because that's what we do on YouTube. You know, we teach each other. Um, of course, we have, I can see, a presser bar pressure uh, adjustment here on the left. Um, and there, of course, there's a side plate. Uh, the, the light bulb, the light fixture is mounted on the back, not unlike many sewing machines from the era. So there's nothing strange about it. One of the things I do see that I really like is, uh, and I think it's one of the reasons this machine doesn't get the, the needle rash that a, or the pin rash that a lot of vintage machines had when people would take fabric and wrap it around the upper body to have a place to put pins. Um, they had a built-in pin cushion. How cool is that? 
Uh, the only other machines I've seen that on were, um, I saw it on a Morse machine, the Toyota made Morse that I had years ago, one of my earlier videos uh, on a, one of that gray, I think it was like a battleship gray color, which was unusual. But you don't see it often. I'm kind of surprised because, you know, it, it's kind of a nice thing to have when you're right at the machine working on it. But anyway, very nice feature to have, and it's even trimmed in chrome. Uh, I'm going to guess, and I'm just guessing. Let me zoom in here. I don't know how easy it is for you guys to see this. Um, this, I'm going to guess, is my stitch length adjustment because I see R up here. I believe that's probably for reverse, but I'm not going to... You know this this thumb screws loose, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it up yet. I want to go in. I want to see what's inside. I I love this. I see access screws, which tells me I can get behind there. Um, I really like to to sort of go slowly, uh, particularly with a machine that I'm not used to. Right. Um, other machines, I kind of know where to look. You know, I've I've worked on so many certain brands, certain Kenmore's and certain Singers so often. I know which areas that I can kind of test and. You know where to put oil just to test them but this is a new uh this is a new uh, model for me never seen it and so i'm taking extra care this uh moves it's stiff but it moves um and this of course is the bobbin winder i actually uh made a video recently on this old style bobbin winder i actually like them i think they're kind of cool uh the, here's the bobbin tire i don't know how old it is but i see that it's got some it's got some uh dents in it just from age, it's going to need replacing, but I'm not worried about finding a replacement. Uh, I will say that the hand wheel and the needle move. That's a good sign. <clears throat> and as I've mentioned before in other videos, guys, when you are when you are uh, looking at machines that have zigzag, very often the vertical motion of the needle will move. Okay, which is one of the strongest parts of the machine. It's one of the strongest linkages. But the zigzag mechanism will sometimes be stuck. So you have to go with patience. Now this, I'm looking over here. You guys help me. Let's zoom in. Maybe we can kind of guess at this together. I literally know nothing about Anker machines. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm brand new, right? It's like the, it's as if the first machine I've ever restored. Um, there's an S here on the left and an E on the right. I'm going to guess and think that S is for sewing and E embroidery, which is also um, darning capability. So it's very possible that's how you drop the feed dogs. I don't know that though. So um, <clears throat> I can feel the feed dogs coming up where I put my finger over here. So I'm hoping that, so that setting is good. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, what else can I show you all? There's a plate up here with a screw that I can remove. I like that. I'm going to be able to get in hopefully, um, hopefully there's a screw with a plate up here. I can move this I can get inside and get behind here and look at all those wonderful linkages that need. They're probably just starving, uh, so starving for oil and lubrication. <clears throat> now the tension dial goes to zero and then it turns. It turns very smoothly. That's nice. Uh, actually, let's see. I want to see here going from zero and goes to nine. Now I'll have to, uh, I'm going to have to study this and find, see if I can find out um, how this tension assembly works, you know, who, what, what's its design like? I really don't know anything about it. I can move it and maybe it's designed to be, you know, uh, just continuously variable. I don't know. You'll notice the check spring is sitting over here. That's not what I usually see, but that could be normal. It's a huge check spring. My God, it's about the size of a fishing hook. Um, one other thing, let's see if I can tilt this without bringing everything on my little video set down. Holy cow. I'm, I'm not kidding, guys. I'm not making this up. This is a heavy beast. My goodness. And uh, of course, because you have zigzag, you have more linkages. Look at that. I am so, I'm just so excited to see something like that. And again, I see a little closed compartment over here. I've noticed some of the 1950s and 60s machines had this it may be a grease container for the for where the gears come together. Oh, and while I'm here, let me show you this, guys. You will see, if you look here, I need to give you a different angle. Sorry. Let's do that. There we go. You see the bobbin case. It's it's like a class 15 singer. And the, the bobbins, I'm I'm gonna I'm guessing are probably 15 class. But okay, it has a different way of enclosing the the uh, the cover here to the race. And the shuttle but this is the thing I really wanted to show you I have seen this on a lot of German made machines 
The bobbin case faces you, but the bobbin plate does not. Normally, I say normally, on most any machine, if the, bo if the bobbin is facing you, then the bobbin plate slides towards you. If the bobbin plate slides on the left, then the bobbin would be facing the left. But it's very contrary. And of course, with those early Berninas, the pre-war Berninas, my God, the bobbin faces toward the back. Um, if any of you have any idea why that was done, there may be a very logical reason for it, but I can't figure it out. Uh, some nice chrome here, or uh, chrome or nickel plating here on the plate. It is a big, giant, heavy beast, and I cannot wait to, to start getting in there and, <clears throat> and taking a look at it. I'll try to make some videos as I go along, guys, because I want you to kind of follow me and maybe you can help me figure it out because this is a brand new design, brand new. I've never touched this brand before. And yes, there are some things I see that are common, but what else do we have here? One other thing I noticed, it looks like the Italian uh, Necky brand was not the only one that used little valves or spring-loaded covers for their oiling spots. There you go. Right? You press in in the center to get oil down and then it's spring-loaded and it comes back um, to sort of keep dust out. That's kind of a nice to have feature, but not necessarily uh, required. And then of course, <laughs> look here guys, I don't know if you can, I think I'm going to lower the camera again. Uh, I'm going to try to zoom in because I want to show you the serial number is here and it is on the very back of the machine. <laughs> You know, normally it's so strange because it looks just like a singer. You know, the singer, sorry, I'm trying to get you some focus here. Normally, you know, the singer uh, serial number plates look just like this, but they're over here just below the front pillar of, of the machine on almost every singer. A couple of exceptions like the featherweights and 301s. But look at this, the serial number's on the back. Maybe they didn't want to disturb the aesthetics of the machine, I don't know. So I have a serial number, that's cool. Now I have to figure out where am I gonna look up this serial number? I really don't know yet, but um, but that is, uh, as they say, stay tuned, more to come on this one. But what a cool looking thing, guys. I'm, I'm really, uh, some of you have mentioned to me before that you wondered how how can I let go of machines and sell them? You know, is, you know, do you ever find machines that you want to keep? I do. Over the years, I've found several that, oh, well, I, mean, I just want to keep this one. Uh, and there is one table, one sewing table from a Kenmore. To this day, I wish I had. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life, period, when it comes to furniture. Um, but uh, cannot find the photos and cannot find the, uh, uh, can't find any of the photos I had of that table to show you, sadly. But who knows? Maybe they'll show up one day. But anyway, there you go, guys. The Anker RZ with this symbol. Uh, I'm going to guess, and I humbly say I'm guessing this. Maybe that means anchor in German, uh, <clears throat> if it's German. Uh, I make no claims until those of you who watch my channel who know more languages than I do can help me. But uh, I don't see any rust, so the machine definitely was kept indoors, and that's, uh, God, that's, that's a blessing. But uh, anyway, what do you think, guys? Uh, I have no idea how I'm gonna price this. I don't even know uh, what such a machine has worth. Uh, I suspect that they're not rare in Europe, <clears throat> even if it was a small company. Certainly in Germany, you'll find more of these, uh, assuming this is a German brand. But uh, in North America, you don't see these every day. So I'm going to chalk it up as rare. And you, know, you guys know I'm very careful about using that word, rare. Um, but because uh, you all pointed out that the, that the rare German Singer 15 treadle that I was showing is not, in fact, German at all. It was made in Scotland and it's wonderful. It's a wonderful machine. But it's, so we can, always, we can always end up fooling ourselves sometimes, you know. Uh, we got, oh, what is this? Okay, there's something else. This little piece moves. So I need to study it, guys. No, no rash behavior. The last thing I want to do is damage anything because I'm just being a goofball and, not, and just, you know, being clumsy with it. I want to take my time, and uh, my hope is to get this machine up and running. Someone has put a, uh, a uh, one of these rubber band type belts, these universal uh, sewing belts. Uh, I really don't like these. It stars power from the machine. That's going to get replaced, but that's an easy fix. But anyway, hope you guys liked uh, seeing this. I Again, uh, I, I've never seen one before. Uh, maybe, maybe they're not rare. Maybe it's just rare to me. I, I will say that. But we've got uh, 
we've got everything seems in place so far cross fingers crossed I don't see anything missing it obviously has a new sewing foot uh, a zigzag foot with a plastic base but I can get more feet and it takes high shank feet just like many of the neckies do so it uses an industrial foot standard it's not an industrial machine but when it comes to domestic machines I suspect this is one of the beefiest I will ever find <laughs> so Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned. I think I'll try to make more videos on this machine and you guys can follow me along and see how I explore how I'm going to uh, figure out how to restore this, uh, this, this beautiful find. Thanks for watching, folks.